in prayer this morning as the praise team comes up, and let's just worship the Lord together in this house today. Lord, you, um, you told us that in the last days there would be perilous times, times, Lord, that were uncertain, times that we would have to navigate through by the leading of your Holy Spirit, and that is why you said to us that we need the witness of the Holy Ghost in our lives, that, Father, more than ever, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. And so today, Lord, as we have come into this house, we've not come to just socialize with anyone, even though we are glad to see one another in the house of the Lord. Father, even though we know according to your word, you told us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. But God, you told us, Lord, we come into the house to come together as the family of God, sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you have told us that we are to come into this place, Lord, with a spirit of thanksgiving and with praise upon our lips. We are to come into this house, Lord God, with the anticipation and expectation of the Lord God Almighty meeting us at the place of need today in all of our lives. Father, that in this place today that you will feed us, Lord God, as we lift up our praises unto you because you, Lord God, are our hope and you are our promise. And as we come to you today, Lord God, we come to you, Lord, with a heart of knowing that you are watching over us, that you have watched over us from the day we were born, even before we were born. And you have watched over us, Lord God, through our rebellious years. You have watched over us through our years, Lord, of giving unto you. And you will continue to watch over us until the day comes that you call us home. And even at that moment, Lord, you said you would come and you would carry us over. So we are never going to be alone again. And so, God, we just give you praise in this house today. That as we are here together and lifting up your name, that the presence of the Holy Spirit will be in this house ministering to us, ministering through us as we, Lord God, are obedient to your word today. So tonight, right now, Lord, we just say, God, we, ask, we just bring ourselves to you. And Father, in the quietness of this moment, we just submit. We submit ourselves. We submit our thoughts. We just open up our heart and say, Holy Spirit, speak to us today. Holy Spirit, move through us today. Have your way among us. And Lord God, we will give you the praise as you are glorified in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. So how many of you came here to praise the Lord? Okay. Even though we're in the middle of hard times people are getting sick but i want us to start out by singing to the one who has created us all and who is the healer and let's give god praise so sing with me today with us together
Amen. 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 I just feel right now as we just are laying hold of the word that God is our healer. That he is the one that is watching over us. That he is the one protecting us and preserving us. Amen. I just want to remind us of the scripture where it says in Isaiah 53 that this was what he was wounded for was our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him. You do not have to be filled with anxiety today. He offers his peace to us, and he says that if we will receive it, that it can be ours today. He says all we like sheep have gone astray, but he says by his stripes... We are healed. We have turned to our own way. But you know what? The Lord says, even if you've turned to your own way, the Lord has laid our iniquity, our sin upon himself. And that there is redemption. There is the redeemer. There is the preserver, the healer, the protector that is watching over each of us today. That name him as Lord of our life today. I want us to pray for the sick that are among us, and I want to name them by names. And if any of you here today want to be prayed for, then we will pray for you. You can either, if you don't feel comfortable coming up, just raise your hand, and we will pray for you here today. But we are believing God to show himself strong on our behalf one more time again. You know what? One more time again. Amen. One more time again. One more time again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We want to lift up Renee and her entire family right now that is under the influence of this COVID virus. We want to lift up um, Heather Hill, which is Brenda's niece, and her entire family as they are also experiencing this. Linda's granddaughters as they are also experiencing this. Vicki Hall, who also is experiencing this. Megan and the children, they've just got something going on, and we're just pleading the blood over them right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, the whole Bethel PH Church family that is experiencing closure because of COVID. We want to pray for Ryan and Amanda Williams, that is Williams, and that is Cindy's child and her daughter-in-law that also have uh, COVID. Brian Gibbons and his family that also are having that problem. Roy Yakita called in with some symptoms but says, Pastor, I don't believe that's it, but I'm staying out just because, and I believe that. Mary Hannah, who is home with headache, migraines today. So we just want to lift them up to the Lord in this house. Are there any other needs or anyone online that needs prayer today? If you will, submit your name on there and we will pray for you at this time hallelujah hallelujah amen as we pray just go ahead just move ahead sorry amen praise you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Get through with this, then we will take all of these other needs to the Lord. Amen. before me defender behind me I won't be I'm filled with anointing Cups overflow. No weapon can harm me. I won't be. People of God sing hallelujah.
Now at this time, I want to pray for those that we have in our church that we need to lift up. Let's just join in prayer together over each of these. 
Father, we lift up Renee Branham and her family right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up Heather Hill and her family in the name of Jesus. We lift up Linda's grandchildren, Lord God, in the name of Jesus and Vicki Hall. We lift up Megan and the children, Lord God. We lift up Bethel Church family, Lord. We lift up Ryan and Amanda Williamson, Lord God. We lift up Brian Gibbons and family, Lord. We lift up Roy Akita and Mary Hannah. Father, we lift up Todd Sepos, one that is called in, Father God, on the online service. Father, we just believe right now, Lord, for you just to manifest your yourself in their lives father as the healer that touches them in the spirit in the very place of their infirmity right now in their body that God that you are more than able Lord Jesus to raise them up to preserve them to protect them and to protect those that are caregivers over each one of them Father God we believe you Lord Jesus to keep this virus from spreading among us but Lord God that you calls it Lord God to stop in Jesus name as your people use wisdom and as your people Lord God recognize recognize, Lord, that there is an unseen enemy, Lord, that we have been waging war against for a mighty long time, Father God. So this is nothing new with us. Satan has never appeared in flesh and blood. He has always fought, Lord God, in the unseen battles. But today we wage war on him, Lord God, in the spirit realm. And we take back, Lord, the healing that is ours in the name of Jesus, that our bodies, Lord God, are filled with the precious blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ and that we are raised up to newness of life and a new creation in Christ Jesus that though the rain may fall upon the just and the unjust we stand today and say we are the just of the Lord and we will put our hope in the Lord God Almighty we will be delivered and we will walk free from this in the name of Jesus Christ we pray Father, we lift up our children and our teachers that are going back to school this next week. Father God, we pray that there be a hedge of protection around each and every one of them, Lord God. That as they return, not only will they pr be protected from predators of the seen world, but God, they will be protected from the predators of the unseen world. That, Father God, that the house of school, Lord God, will once again be a place of learning. But, Lord God, that it will never replace the knowledge of you, Lord God. And that it will be a place, Lord Jesus, where friendships are made but Father God that there be no bullying Lord God of the children of God nor the people Lord God in that place that you Lord God will make it a place a safe haven for our children and for our teachers that the education Lord God of our children may be able to go forward Lord God and that in the midst of it all Lord may you be glorified in what they learn and if there is anything in those textbooks, God, and we know that there are that speak contrary to the word of God, we pray, Lord God, for it to be erased and annihilated from the minds of our children so that they may know the truth instead of man's manipulation of what they want us to know. Father, we stand today in agreement that you are our intercessor our mediator you are our very present help in the time of need and we lean upon you right now in the name of Jesus to help us navigate through these perilous times that we may make it safely to the other side still in the boat and still serving you in Jesus name we pray amen Woo! praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah I want to take up our tithes and offerings at this time before our praise team finishes up with praise and worship. Right, so Casey was supposed to sing this song that we're getting ready to sing last week at the river, but for some reason it didn't get sang. We know that the Lord moves things. So I pray as we sing that the message that she feels like someone here needs it, I pray that you all will receive it. Worship with us. Now 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of you can stand here today and say, I'm yours? Amen. Hallelujah. As Jesus said, as Stephen said, and those others that have gone on before us said, it's into your hands I commit my spirit. Amen. That's where God wants us all to be, that we are so leaning in on him that we just say, Lord, whatever you want to do with me, I am pliable, workable, and usable in the hands of the master. Amen. You know, that's what in true life, that is what a master does. They give instructions and directions, and those that are under their submission do exactly what they say. They don't have any ask. They don't ask. They don't question. They just do. Why? Because the master is said. And, you know, we get to a place of where we receive Jesus as our Savior. And we say, you know, Lord, I know you've saved me from sin, but I don't understand what you're doing in my life. That's because he's not quite yet master. When he's master, we accept wherever we are and look for what God is doing in it. And that's really important for us to understand in the day and time that we are living in that we have got to look for God not only in the good times, but we've got to look for him in the bad times too. Because as today the Lord has laid upon my heart, there are going to be bumps on the road and a lot of us have already acknowledged, seen, and addressed some of the bumps along the road that we call the journey of life. We didn't create, I don't know about y'all, but Eddie yesterday coming back across the state with a trailer and a tractor on the back of it, there were occasions while we were traveling that we hit some bumps in the road if you understand what I'm talking about now we didn't create them 
Yet we ran into them, if you understand what I'm talking about. We didn't cause those bumps in the road, but we had to deal with them. We either had to go around them or we had to go through them. And I know for myself, there have been times in my vehicle that because of oncoming traffic, I wasn't able to move into the other lane to dodge a major pothole in the road and therefore had to hit it and the consequences was that my vehicle became out of line does somebody understand what I'm trying to say today there are bumps in the road that are there that we didn't create and the intention of it is to throw us out of line with what God is wanting to do to cause us to question our father to cause us to question his authority and his ability to bring us through whatever we are going through to get us to where he wants us to be oh now come on somebody needs to talk to me today we have the same today. We didn't create this new bump that we're going through right now. But we got to learn how to deal with it and make our way through it. You know what? If there needs to be an alignment, we need to be able to take it to the shop of Almighty God and say, line me back up with what you want to do in my life. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today the word of the Lord came to me and said, you know what? We're still just going through some tests in our life. We thought we had just come through one and we could wipe our brow and say, Woo, it's over with now. We're going on and we find here we are again. And once again, we're having to make some decisions because of the bumps that are in the road. Psalms 105, 17 says to us today, He sent a man before them. Oh, come on now. He sent a man before them. Joseph was his name, who was sold as a slave. Now, see, here we are. We got Joseph, the favorite of his father. And he's put in a place that where the Word of God says he was sent before him. That means there was some predestination going on. In the process of Joseph's life. That didn't look like part of God's plan. But God says, I sent him. Not only did I send him. He said, but I allowed him to be sold as a slave. He didn't create that situation whatsoever. It said they hurt his feet with fetters. In other words, they tied him up. He had shackles around his ankles. He was laid in irons until the time that his word, listen to this, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Mm. Oh. Father, help us to examine today. That the word of the Lord is being tested in us because it hasn't come to pass yet. Amen. You know, there's few things in this life that are, have the potential, the powerful po potential as an individual who knows exactly what they were created for. We've been talking over several weeks of recognizing the significance of the journey that you and I are on. That we didn't get saved and immediately transported to heaven. And we don't understand why sometimes because it's like this. That when we are still here, we undergo stuff. We are pressed. We are tested. We are stretched. We suffer. Let's be honest. We suffer in this life and we don't understand sometimes why God saved us then we have to go through so much junk in this life but I'm here to remind us all that the world is going through junk too 
They suffer too. Quit believing the lie that they have it made because children are committing suicide every day that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. That tells me there is a devil out there that is trying to torment even the minds of the lost as well as those that are God's children, okay? But we have in this place the ability that if we know what God has put us here for, if we recognize and remember the promise, the, remember the prophetical word that has been spoken over us, it has the powerful potential to do amazing things in our life. Mm, far beyond what you can imagine and dream, myself included. I take to you a particular person that we know this day. His name is Michael Phelps. Does anybody recognize that name? The all-time Olympic winner of swimming. 28 gold medals. Not even counting. I didn't even bother to count all of the other medals that he had. Those were 28 Olympic medals that he received. And it says that when you read his life that you recognize it wasn't so much what they bred into him because all he did was his, he was ADHD. His mother wanted him to have a sport that could relieve some of that hyperactivity. So she put him into swimming in order to kind of calm him down. Oh, I'm telling you. But when they examined his body after he began to win so many medals, they said his body was created like a seal. That his torso was long enough to make him be able to fly through the water. That the shape of his duck-like feet. Now listen to me. This is a human being, not a duck. Quack like that. You know, I'm not going there. But his feet foot his feet were shaped into a duck-like way to where it made him have the ability to swim faster than others his arms were longer than an average man which made his ability to reach and to take on water he was made to swim he was made to be a winner. And when he tapped into that, there was nothing that could stop him until he chose to retire from swimming. Oh, I'm just saying to us, there is a purpose in you being born that the power and the potential is beyond your knowledge of knowing how God has already equipped you to do it. Hmm. Joseph. The scripture said, Joseph. He was a man who was sent before them. Joseph had two dreams as a young lad. One of his was that he had uh, saw a sheath. And that it rose up. The wheat rose up. And his rose up above all of the others. And it said that in that place that he saw that all of the other wheat, all of it bowed down to his. Hmm. And then it said that he had a second dream. And in that dream he said the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to him. And when he shared this with his family, it made his brothers angry. But his father, it says, what are you saying to us? Are you telling me that even your mother and I and your brothers are going to bow down to you? The least among us, the smallest among us, that you're going to be someone that we we're going to bow down to. And whereas the brothers all became angry, <laughs> jealous, filled with fury over the insult of this brother, the father, it said, pondered this in his heart. Hmm. You know what, though? There came a point and there came a time when the father 
sent him to take food to the brothers in the field. And we know the story, if you have any Bible knowledge whatsoever, ever been in children's church, you know it was the father that sent him out that day to his brothers. And the test began. He was thrown in a pit, left for dead. But then the softness of some of the brothers' hearts says, no, we can't kill him. Let's sell him. And they sold him into slavery. They carried him away to a foreign place. And then it's like, where did this come from? Joseph didn't cause it. He was obeying what his father told him to do. And in that place, he met the bump in the road. As we read through his story from that point, we know how he was in the pit, how he was sold into slavery, how he went to Potiphar's house, became his servant. We know then, after that story, that Potiphar's wife desired him. But because he was an honorable man, he would not give in to her wishes. So therefore, she accuses him falsely. He is then again thrown into prison again. We also know That in that place, that God gave him favor in all of these. In none of these places is there mention that God ever came to Joseph again and reminded him of who he was or what he was to become. We read in Joshua time and time again that the Lord reminded him, you be strong and very courageous as I was with Moses So I will be with you. Be strong. Be courageous. I remember reading in Gideon. When Gideon. He told him. I'm with you. I will be with you. I have promised you. But never in the story of Joseph. Do you read. Where God came back to him. And reminded him. Who he was. The dreams. Sustained him. The word keeps reminding us in this story that God was with him and that God showed his favor to him. But it never says God visited him again and said, don't forget what I gave you. The importance of us today is knowing what God has said to you and I. Life is full of bumps. If we truly believe we are living in the end times and only a fool would believe differently. I mean, let's just be honest. Yesterday, Eddie and I stopped to get some peaches from a man and he cursed one breath and then told us in the next one we're living in the end times. So even the world knows that we're living in the end times. You understand what I'm saying? So if we know we are living in these end times, the word of God tells us that there are perilous, uncertain times that are going to be among us. He says, but don't worry about these things because I'm telling you beforehand so that you will be able to navigate through them as you are being led by my spirit. Spirit of God was guiding Joseph the whole way. It made him act in an appropriate way when he was sold into Potiphar's house. He became favored in the house, became the one who was head over his house, and became such that Potiphar lent everything unto him until the enemy moved in. And falsely accused, he goes back into prison. And he does so, and he finds even in that place the favor of God because he acted according to what he knew God would want him to. And I'm saying to us today that that is what God is testing the word of God in all of us is will we act according
according to what the Father has said to us in this day and this time that we are living in. Isaiah 40 verse 3 through 5 tells us why there is a test. We read this scripture and it tells us like the same thing that John the Baptist got up and preached whenever he came on the scene. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. But Isaiah said this way back all those hundreds of years prior to that. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord is spoken. And when we read this scripture we think that's exactly what John the Baptist was sent to do because he proclaimed it that day as he stood and the proclaimed claimed it to the people of God but I'm here to tell you that wasn't just for John the Baptist that prophetical word was done unto anybody that names the name of the Lord that we are a voice that is crying out in the wilderness saying that we are to prepare the way of the Lord in this day and this time that we are living in we are to make straight the paths of of the Lord a highway for our God It says every valley shall be lifted up. In other words, every low place in our lives is supposed to be elevated up through the power and the preparation of the Almighty God. Every high place, every mountain shall be brought low, which means every prideful place in our life where we think we're this and we're that and that we can do it without God. It's going to be brought down to a level place of where we recognize our dependency is on the Lord. This is how we prepare the way of the Lord in a place of wilderness. We've got to recognize that every crooked place made smooth means every wicked place that is in you and I every self-centered place inside of you and me every place where Satan has got the attitude inside of us it ain't happening to me it ain't happening to my church and God will rise up and say Satan get behind me who are you to say what God is going to do in this time in this hour I remind each of us That the word does tell us that the rain does fall on the just and on the unjust. Storms come in everybody's life. Bad things happen to good people. Why? Because just like Jesus said unto Peter, James and John, he says you're looking for a kingdom here on earth. You're looking for all of your needs to be met here on earth. But I'm here to tell you I'm doing something that it's not a matter of what's going on inside of your physical body and in your physical world. I want to know what's going on in your spirit, man. These are areas of our lives that God is bringing into balance. The low places and the high places. The places of where we walk, where the Lord tells us to walk. We do it without fear, without any type of hesitation because we know the Lord is in it. The word of the Lord will be tested in all of us. You read the book of Acts. With every great move of God, there was an attack of the enemy that came right after it. Two weeks ago, we were in revival at Bethel. They had such a move of God in that place. Ten were filled with the Holy Ghost. Every person in their leadership, every person on their praise team, 
was filled with the Holy Ghost with power. Three days later, three more were baptized in the Holy Ghost in the pastor's home because they couldn't get away from what they witnessed in the services. Three people were saved that they had been praying years for them to get saved. One of those that got filled with the Holy Spirit was one of their head deacons, one of their head council members who had been seeking the Lord and had been a a high member in that church for over 30 years and had felt like he would never get the baptism. Well, I want you to know God gloriously filled him with the Holy Ghost when he finally allowed himself to let the Holy Ghost have a voice inside of him. And four days later, COVID hit that church. Now 11 people have COVID in that church and they're not able to have service today. And you say, well, where was God in the midst of all that? It's a testing of the word. It is a testing of what God is doing. And we have to know that if it happened to Joseph in this way, if it happened to Moses in this way, because remember, Moses was sent to deliver God's people, but it never said he had an easy road delivering them. David was anointed as the king as a young man, but he you found him often in wars against his own people. Why? Because they did not want to receive him as king. The only ones that did receive him were those that were rejected, those that were discontented, those that were in debt. In other words, people you wouldn't ordinarily want on your side. And the reason they came to him was because they had nowhere else to go. But he was anointed king. He hid in caves. He ran from his enemy. He fought with the enemy, the Philistines. He did all kinds of things until the word of the Lord came to pass in his life because it tested him. He had occasion upon occasion to kill Saul. But because the Spirit of the Lord was in him, he refused to touch God's anointed. John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way, yet his head was taken off of his shoulders because he cried, I must decrease, that he must increase. And we find that the disciples were sent to make more disciples. Had a very specific command. Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel. Make disciples of all nations. They met much pain. They met much opposition. They met many bumps in the road. But because they knew what God had spoken, they turned the known world upside down. Unlearned, uneducated Galileans that no one else paid attention to until they brought the fish into port. But they turned the world upside down Because created inside of them was a purpose of God that they tapped into. And they fulfilled the mission. And you and I have the Bible. We have the gospel of Jesus Christ. And able to receive forgiveness of our sins. Because they fulfilled what God had called them to do. When we are awakened to what God is speaking over us, the only thing that can stop us is heaven itself because the heavens open up above that person and he and he alone will determine their limitations. (laughs) Oh, wow. Wow. I began as a teacher of the word. But God said do something. And Eddie and I 
believed him. And today, I know I'm walking in what God has called us to do beyond my limitations because it is him that is working. But it's not just for ministers. It's not just for singers. It's not just for musicians. It's not just, it's for every soul winning, born again, blood bought, child of God to tap into what God has said you are to be. God's word shapes you and I. God's word fulfills itself in you and I. God's word is what gives you power. God's word is what gives you the intention and the knowledge to know where he is leading you to. God's word is what's shaping you and then he sends us out to shape our world around us. Adam in the garden didn't have anything on you and I. He named everything that was created. And he had dominion over it because he was fulfilling his potential as God's man. I want to ask us today. Are we doing the same? Or are we... Doing like some people, we're just surviving the day. When we survive the day, and I think we've all been there, felt like we couldn't be happy enough when we laid our head on that pillow that night because we said, whew, maybe tomorrow will be a better day. When we've done so, what we have felt is defeat in that day because we have felt like the day or the dragons have won that day. It has beat us down. It has worn us out. It has frustrated us. It's brought out a side of us that we thought was long dead. It's brought out that old man, you know, that sometimes we just had to think was already dead. And somehow or another, he got his arm up out of that grave anyway, you know, and just jerked us back down. Well, I'm here to tell you today that God is saying to us that it's high time for us to quit surviving the day. He said for us, it's time for us to get a hold of what God is wanting to do in us and through us and rise up to a new place in him. Quit going halfway up the mountain. Go all the way up because when you go go all the way up the enemies are a whole lot less saying than they are halfway up the mountain they will go and congregate to a place of mediocrity you understand what I'm saying the enemies will congregate at a place called mediocrity because it is at a level where all of them are willing to go but for those people that are willing to go to the heights of the mountain that are willing to go and rank up on top of the mountain for those of them there are only a few devils that are able to go up there and able to reside and I'm here to tell you you can defeat a devil one at a time but when you sit in a place of mediocrity where you've got every devil that is willing to go that high I'm here to tell you what will happen to you you will find yourself overwhelmed with the enemy of your soul climb up do like Joseph did he had to climb up he could have let that butler and he could have let that baker. He could have let them just thought about their dreams and not opened his mouth. But because somewhere in the middle of it all, he didn't see a way of escape. But he saw two people in need and he had understanding. He interpreted their dreams and when he did, it came to pass. And you would think that at that point, there would be deliverance. But two more years he waited in that prison. And he did it. Believing God still was going to do what he said he was going to do. Two years went by. And when he was delivered. He was brought out of prison. He was washed. He was given a new garment. And he stood before the king. And as surely as he stood before his brothers, as surely as his father came and knelt at his feet whenever he didn't know who he was, the word of the Lord rose up in Joseph and said, the word has been fulfilled. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Don't 
give up. Get up. It isn't the hour to take a break. It isn't an hour to take your ease. It is an hour to stand up from where you've been resting and say, God, I'm going higher. God, I'm getting up. I will not faint. I will not stop. I will. I will see the word of the Lord fulfilled in my life. You say, Pastor, what is that word? Only you know that. You know the words that have been spoken over you throughout the years. You know what God has spoken into your heart long before you ever came to this church. I've heard people share things that happened to them in dreams as a child. Seeing visions, Muslims seeing visions of a man dressed in white, not knowing what it was but they felt love in that dream felt so much love in that dream and everywhere they went they went to the Quran they went to all of these other places looking for the love they felt in that dream as a six year old boy not finding it anywhere banished from his family because he would not commit to the Quran he sought and he sought and he went to class. And as he did, he went to a class on religion to see if he could find this man dressed in white. <laughs> as God would have it, just like Potiphar was there. Just like the king was there. Just like the dream of the famine was being prepared by God Almighty. In that classroom was a born-again teacher filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And as he began to say, what I came searching for was the religion that has a man dressed in white. And the teacher said, I will talk to you after class. He invited him to his home church that was having to be watched carefully because of the Muslims in Turkey at that time. He introduced him to Jesus Christ. And this young teenage Muslim boy found the guy who came in his dreams at the age of six. He has now founded the church in Laodicea where they are having to have guards all around the church because of the move of God and the power of God that is moving in this Muslim nation. They can't touch him. They haven't been able to arrest him. They haven't been able to do anything with him. Because he's walking in the potential of what God had called him to do. And I'm here to say to somebody today, there is some potential inside of you. You have gone far, but you haven't gone far enough. You've tapped into some, but you haven't tapped into all that God's wanting to do in you. And you have hit some bumps in the road, and you're going to hit some more bumps in the road. And you didn't create them, but you got to figure out how to get through them. Because with God's help, they are only there to bring you across to the other side and that there is no storm there is no devil in hell that can keep you from what God has spoken over you for the word of the Lord that is tested inside of you it will be fulfilled hallelujah 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 stand strong in it today hallelujah hallelujah I want to read the last scripture in that that was said it says in Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, and I didn't give this to you, Weeze, but it says, Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? He never faints, nor is he weary. Somebody needs to tap into that today. You need to move past your unbelief and believe that God is. You got to believe that God will and that he's going to because he said it, he will do it. Hallelujah. The creator of the ends of the earth never faints, nor is weary his understanding 
is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want to know if you are in that category. Stand to your feet in this house today. Hallelujah. 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 We have no idea what is in front of us. But we know who's there already. And whatever he is doing in us, he will make a way through it. And when he is finished with us on this side, he will call us home. I am assured of that according to his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, right now, Lord, as I stand here today, And Lord, as I think about the testimony of Dee's dad, Reverend James Brown, Father God, he lived life. He loved life. He fulfilled life. And he did so until the day you called him home. And God, that was the testimony that he left to those that are inheriting his name. Those that are inheriting the promise that has been made to him throughout his generations. That Father God, he will always have someone in his house that is blessing and serving the Lord with all of their heart. So Father, I stand today and I say we will not faint Because we have a generation coming behind us that God has got to know the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No longer watered down. No longer religionized. Father God, but a true relationship with you. And that means we got to press past that halfway mark, God. We got to pick it up. Move past the enemies that are squelching right around that mediocrity line. And God, tap in. To the peak of the mountain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now. Right now. Is there anyone in the house today? You say, Pastor. Woo, that's for me today. That's for me today. Amen. Right now. Father, I speak encouragement. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel this is for the whole body right now. We could all gather around around this altar But I just feel right now we just need to raise our hands and say, God, I receive it today in the name of Jesus. I recognize the bumps and this is what I'm saying. Father, forgive me for blaming you for the bumps in the road. They were created to be a test for me. And Father, I pray right now that you will help me to recognize and see the bumps in front of me so that I can know through the power of the Holy Spirit how to go through them and that when I get on the other side I'm going to keep on traveling in the name of Jesus Um, there ain't nothing going to stand in my way if I need realignment right now in the name of Jesus realign what has gotten off kilter in Jesus name and place me back into a place Lord God of safety and security in you that Lord no matter what this world brings I am hidden in the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Is there anyone here today that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? This one that will take us where we cannot go on our own. Is there anyone here today? If it is, just raise your hand and we will pray with you in this house. We all began that way. We all began not knowing who he was. But praise be to God. He has revealed himself to us. And he has made us more than we could have ever been on our own. We were in the miry clay. But he set our feet upon a rock to stay. Hallelujah. I believe all of us here today. For those of you watching online today. The word of the Lord says, if you will confess 
your sins unto the Lord Jesus Christ and ask for his forgiveness that he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all of the wrong that has been that you can rise up he will no longer cause you to feel condemned but he will rise you up and make you a new creation in Christ Jesus find you a good church home find you a place of tapping into the word of God and allow it to rise up inside of you and bring out everything God created you for so today as we leave this sanctuary go in the power and in the potential of what God is wanting you to do Vicki this week when you hit that mail route every bump you just be reminded that bump intended to take me out but God brought me through every bump that we have gone through God has brought us through and we have yet to see what the end of the road has for us because we have just tapped in to the next level amen amen praise the Lord